Hey, is this picture showing a woman with what looks like a pet anaconda the real deal? Or is somebody trying to play a visual joke on us? I've got the answer to that odd couple of a mystery, plus answers on a couple other puzzlers you guys sent in. Like this photo that claims this is a solar energy farm shaped like a panda bear. This photo that wants us to believe the peace sign was actually started in the Brazilian jungle by this tribe. And this photo that claims to show the world's tallest Lego tower. I've got all that plus some new fan art, my favorite fake of the week, and some all new voicemails. So sit back and get ready to test your skills to see if you can tell what is real and what is fake. Hey guys, Bill here. You know, one thing I think we all know, there are a lot of people out there with strange pets like George Clooney and his pot belly pig, this couple and their buffalo that they keep in the living room, and even this woman who has a pet crocodile. But what about this woman with a pet anaconda? The picture was sent in by Marcos who just wrote, is it possible this picture is for real? Marcos, as you know, I've been pretty close to a lot of anacondas in South America, but I've never seen anybody who keeps an anaconda as a pet. So. What do you say we check this one out and see what we can find out? First off, let's talk about anacondas, okay? Obviously, they are a very large snake and live in the Amazon region of South America. They're considered the largest snake in the world when measured by weight and second when measured just in terms of how long it is. The anaconda is one of the most feared creatures in the Amazon because of how it hunts. It first grabs its prey by biting it, then coils itself around its victim and slowly crushes it to death before eating it whole. I've personally seen some of these snakes and I can tell you they aren't anything you want to mess around with. So here's my question. Why would a woman want to keep one of these dangerous snakes right next to her on the couch in her house? Makes me wonder how true this picture could actually be. Looking closer at the picture, I automatically see there are some things that are off here. Number one is, why does this woman appear to be lifting the snake up so easily? Anacondas weigh more than 550 pounds or 250 kilograms. I don't know about you, but if I had to lift that thing, I mean, you might see some strain in my face. Zooming in on the picture, I pick up a few more odd clues. Right here where the snake first contacts the couch, it would clearly cause the cushion to crush down even just a little. But here, it just seems to be perfect, like there isn't any snake on there at all. Then up here where her hand is holding the snake's head. Something odd is going on with her hand here. It looks all blurry in here, like maybe she was once holding something else and the photoshopper changed whatever she was holding before with a huge anaconda now. At this point, I was really in need to find somebody to help me with the smoking gun on this one. So I reached out to one of the best researchers I know, Marley Hansen from my Facebook team. Marley jumped right on it and helped me come up with this, the official answer. Now, if you watch this show, you know I'm dying to tell you what's in here, but I can't tell you what's in here until you tell me what you got going on up there, okay? Now, when I say go, what I want you to do is just go ahead and vote right up here. Leave an answer down in the old comment section if you can't do that. And if you're watching with your mom and dad or mom and dad, if you're watching with your kids, then I want you to just go ahead and yell it out, okay? All right, you ready? And go. While we're waiting for everybody to make up their minds and vote, what do you say we do a little lucky no lucky? A tow truck driver is trying to rescue a big rig trucker on an icy mountain road. Will the tow truck driver succeed in his mission? Or will the heavy big rig prove too big to rescue? If you think luck is with the tow truck driver, then just go ahead and yell out lucky. But on the other hand, if you think this isn't going to be his day, then just yell no lucky. Okay, now let's see which way the winds of fate are blowing. Uh... 
Luckily, the tow truck driver jumped out of his truck before it went over, and nobody else was in the other truck, so nobody got hurt. Okay, now that we know, you have to be very careful when you're trying to help people get out of the snow, like these guys were trying to get their friend's car out of the snow and ended up pulling the bumper off. What do you say we get back to this? Our lady with that big anaconda. What do you think she does for dinner when that thing's around? Or what do you think that thing does for dinner when it's around? Whoa, she's probably looking at that lady for sure. Anyway, you think you got it right? Huh? How'd you vote? All right, well, let's see. Now, the official answer is, and I think you might be a little bit surprised by this, the official answer is, believe it or not, 100%, without any doubts whatsoever, real. Marley Hansen definitely gets the smoking gun award on this one. She found the original photographer who took the picture. His name is Holger Kirk from Hamburg, Germany. I wrote to Mr. Kirk for confirmation, but unfortunately, he didn't write me back. But we judged the picture to be real after finding more pictures from this same photo shoot. While we don't believe the snake is actually her pet, we do believe the snake is real. It would not make sense to Photoshop so many different versions of the same setup. Next up is this odd picture. It comes to us from Josephine Jaranilla, who just wrote, is this real or Photoshop? Josephine, when it comes to putting pictures of giant pandas on things, we have all sorts of examples like logos, lunch boxes, backpacks, even ice cream. But when it comes to putting a giant panda picture on a whole solar farm, I don't even know how you would do something like that. Say what? If we poke around a little bit on the internet, we can see that solar farms just arrange thousands of solar panels that convert heat from the sun into electricity. Most of the time they look like this, or this, or even this one built by Amazon to help cut down its electric bill and help the environment. Okay, well, I guess you know what time it is. It's time for you to let me know what you're thinking, okay? Now, here's how we're gonna vote on this one. If you think that's a real photo of a real solar farm that looks like a panda bear, then I want you to vote real. If on the other hand, you think that's a fake photo, or it's a fake picture, or it's a fake solar farm, or you think it's even a rice patty, then I want you to vote fake, okay? And if you think we don't have an answer at all, then I want you to just vote unknown. So you go ahead and do that. I'll get out this, and we're gonna find out who's right and who's wrong with this one. Ready? You think they can make a, a, a whole solar farm, make it look like a polar bear? I mean, what do you do? You like walk around and you like paint this part of that thing. And if you put paint on a solar panel, how's it gonna see the sun? I don't, I don't know, I don't get it. Man. It's not my thing. Anyway, let's get the end. Oh, wow. That thing is real. Aldo Na was the smoking gun winner on this one. Aldo found a link to this article in Forbes magazine. This giant solar farm, as it turns out, is near Datong, China, a place I've actually been to. It's a 250-acre or 100-hectare installation. It produces 100 megawatts of energy to the electrical grid. And guess what? It's just the first of over a hundred panda-shaped solar farms planned across Asia in the coming years. They're even planning on putting one of these things on the islands of Fiji in the near future. Next up is this picture sent in by Johnny Viper. Is it true a Brazilian Amerindian tribe were the first ones to use the hand signal for peace in 1932? Johnny, if you would have told me that Hawaiians actually came up with that hand sign, I would have been much more likely to believe it because, you know, those guys have hand signs for everything. But why on earth would the indigenous people of Brazil come up with this? I mean, who did they want peace with? The loggers and gold miners that were moving into their land and destroying it? Poking a little deeper, I learned that Winston Churchill used this sign, but he used it to mean victory, not peace. Using it for peace became more popular among Americans during the Vietnam War. That was a war many people wanted stopped, so when you made this sign with your hand, it meant that you wanted the war to end. As famous Beatle John Lennon sang all the time, 
All we are saying is give peace a chance. Give peace a chance. Yeah. Eventually the war would stop, but the hand signal did live on. But is it true that a tribe in the middle of the jungle around 1932 were the first ones to come up with it? All right, so I'll tell you what, go ahead and leave me your votes up here. Answer yourself in the comment section. I just shouted it out. I'm gonna get to this, and we're gonna find out where that peace sign came from, or rather, if it came from the Indians. And uh, then hopefully, we'll be able to have some peace ourselves. Uh, okay, well, to tell you the truth, this isn't exactly the answer I thought we were gonna get, but uh, the truth is, it's fake. Darren Strange and Jeff Kane were the first ones to lead us to the truth on this one. As it turns out, this picture is not from the 1930s and isn't from the Amazon. It actually comes from a scene from the epic King Kong movie, Kong Skull Island, released in 2017. And in case you're wondering, the modern peace sign began in 1958. It was designed by Gerald Holton for the British campaign for nuclear disarmament. Where the actual hand signal came from, well, you guessed it. That one's unknown. Our last picture today comes to us from Tyree Cloyd, who just wrote, is this picture showing the world's tallest Lego tower for real? Tyree, if anybody believes that really is the tallest Lego tower in the world, then, hey, listen, I got a question for you. How do you build something like that? First off, it would take billions of Lego pieces and somebody with a really tall ladder. And if you look closely at the top of the picture, it gets very fuzzy up there and looks like 100% Photoshop to me. But on the other hand, you know, you never know about these things. It's like I always say, we live in strange times and maybe a very small person learned, you know, they built it and they stayed on the top and then, you know, they had uh, like a parachute or something and they got down. <laughs> anyway, tell you what, go ahead and leave your votes up here. And if you think that's a real picture of a real Lego tower, I want you to vote real. Otherwise, just vote fake or unknown or just yell it out. I'm getting out to this so we can get down to the bottom of it because I want to get on to this week's fan art, which is coming up pretty soon. All right. And the official, what? No way. Are you sure this is the right one? Yeah, it is. Tallest Lego tower. You guys are not going to believe this. This one is real. The tower was built in 2017 in Israel. It stands just over 118 feet or 40 meters tall. It took over 500,000 bricks and was built to honor an eight-year-old boy who died of cancer. The previous winner was this tower in Milan, Italy and was built in 2015. It measures 114 feet or 34 meters. All right, well, that's all the time I have for the bulk of this fabulous video. But hey, if you're thinking about clicking away, I wouldn't do that because I just happened to have the answer to last week's mystery picture. Remember that picture of the big octopus chasing a diver out of the water? Well, thanks to Bill's channel viewers like Costas the Sad Kefties and Mason Aromont, we now know it's fake and comes from a place called the Oregon Undersea Gardens in Newport, Oregon, United States. The tourist attraction opened in 1966, but is now closed. Too bad we can't still go there. My favorite reel of the week is this video that comes to us from the deck of a ship somewhere at sea. It shows an octopus doing a Houdini escape from the deck of a ship. It was posted by Zena Gardman. That octopus really did squeeze through that hole to get away. Amazing. And now what so many of you have been waiting for. That's right. This week's and I. First up is this cartoonish smiling Bill from At Cat Moon. I don't know what Bill is laughing at, but it must be so, so fake. It's funny. Thanks, Cat Moon. Next up is this piece called Bill's Tale. Creator Andreas on YouTuber said he made it as a parody of the RPG game Undertale. 
On my trip back up to the surface, I meet the monster known as Unknown. Very clever, Andreas. Thanks. Here we have a multi-layered piece from Me Eon. It features the ever-popular Momo, the less-known Black-Eyed Kids, and the epic Fire Tornado. <laughs> nice work, thanks, Eon. Logan Clements is the artist behind this treatment of the Megalodon. In this case, the Megalodon seems to be reacting to what a big, fat fake he is. Thanks, Logan. Great job. Our last piece in the voting section today is this pencil on notebook paperwork by Philip Watson. In this one, it looks like Bill teams up with Freddy Fazbear to shoot the Mothman with the truth gun. Thank you, Philip. You have a wild imagination. Now, here's just a couple more that didn't make the voting section because YouTube only allows us to vote for five per card, but I like them anyway. And hey, don't forget, we have a new show every Friday so don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the notifications bell so you get a shot at being first official comment and win the pin. If you have a picture and you're not quite sure whether it's real or not, send it in to me at billschannel at gmail.com and I'll take a look. Please don't leave links or suggestions in the comment section because really, the only thing that is going to do is turn me into a mega screamer screaming, you're driving me crazy! See you next time. And now, for my favorite fake of the week, Liberty Lampert sent this photo in and asked, is this a fake photo? <laughs> Liberty, of course it's fake. Nobody makes diving fins that look like that. And where's the diver's air hose? No wonder the shark is so happy. Hey, Bill. I kind of like your videos and uh, they're so much fun. Hi, Bill. That's why I said thank you for hearing my message. And Hey, Bill, I'm bored, so I decided, uh, I decided to send this message. Hi, Bill. This is Flower Girl. I just wanted to say you are really awesome. I watch your videos every day on Friday. Keep on rocking, man, all the way.